It's the Wednesday Wisdom Show, and you want to know, is spirituality a theory? You hear this all the time, and maybe you feel this, and maybe you say this. I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. The problem with that statement and that desire is that we don't really know what spirituality is. We have a pretty good idea of what religion is. It's a belief system, usually a community. One thing we do know about spirituality is that it shouldn't be based on beliefs. That spirituality in in the generality means that a person has direct experience as opposed to simply believing something. But in general, there's no hard definition of what it is that a person should be aimed at, what they should be experiencing uh, when we talk about spirituality. So it is kind of like saying that a person is spiritual is like saying, I'm nothing. (laughs) Now that may be very spiritual if you can actually reach the point where where you're nothing and everything, but it means that we don't have a target. We don't know where we're going. And we have people who aren't necessarily not religious, but that they haven't really reached that experience, that direct experience level within their religion. Sometimes at the beginning of of a person's kind of conversion or awakening in religion, they will feel some very, very strong things, and their reason does not get in the way of the power of what's going on in their heart and in their perception. And they feel that they're in direct contact with, what shall I call it, the figures, the avatars, the beliefs of that religious system. But when a person stays in a religion long enough, uh, they eventually get a hunger for, well, what is the essence of this thing? And there are people who uh, were never bought into a religion, even if they grew up in one, and don't have an affinity to it. I mean, they have a customary affinity because it's family, you know, and it's community. Those things are great and they're warm, they're good. But as far as fulfilling the desire of the person to touch truth and direct experience, uh, it's generally lacking. So then what is it that a person is seeking that they want to directly experience? We have uh, all kinds of things in in New Age uh, spirituality. And one of the hallmarks of of New Age spirituality is that it's not really anything. It's like a smorgasbord. You can pick and choose anything you want from all different paths. And there's uh, an idea behind all of this that somehow they're all equal and they all take a person to the same place. Um, And that is actually a theory. And it's an odd one because in any of the practices uh, and traditions that New Age people admire... Uh, there is a fundamental part of it that's lacking in in that approach. And that is the absolute commitment to the path. Those those spiritual paths were not uh, eclectic in their time, uh, nor are they today. They require uh, a deep commitment to the method of a particular path. Because for a person to climb on any of these paths, they have to stop doing all of the other things, concentrate their efforts on that path, and then see what happens. Test it out. You know, move from from the aspects of, well, I believe in this, to I am either experiencing what it says or I am not experiencing it. So then, 
what is spirituality? What is a person supposed to be experiencing that they can say whether or not they're having a direct experience? I would like to explain what one particular path, the one that I'm connected with, Kabbalah, how it defines spirituality. It says that spirituality, the spiritual, is selfless bestowal. That a person should reach a place where they give to the entire system, people, plants, animals. You don't even have to break it down, just that the entire system that we live in, that the, the heart should be filled with a desire to fulfill everything outside of ourselves, to bring good to absolutely everything without referring it to ourselves, because we're naturally part of this system. So it is pure bestowal without a trace of receiving for myself. This is a thing that doesn't exist uh, in a person at the beginning of their spiritual path because it's not built into a person. This is why we say that a person must climb the ladder, so to speak, in order to reach this sensation. The sensation is actually an intention. It means that it's a use of life itself, a proper use of life. Now, that's the goal, and we can't look at ourselves and think, well, oh yeah, I understand that, I feel that, I can do that. No, there is a methodology, because it's a science. Um, and today, we can better understand many aspects of this science that in the past we couldn't, because we hadn't developed to the point where the way that we think uh, was, was capable of that, where certain things in um, the dimension that we live in became evident enough that we began to sense beyond the physical. And again, the definition of the physical in Kabbalah is not matter, but it is a quality of desire. Physical being a desire for myself, and spiritual or higher dimensions being a desire for the whole system. So there's a method of using the search for this definition of spirituality as an experience within yourself. And even though one has got to learn all of the things in this science in one way or another, and use the methodology in this science, this target is kind of like, I don't know, do you know this trick that you can get out of any, any maze uh, by simply putting your right hand on one of the walls? and never allowing that hand to come off the wall. So no matter where it takes you, even if it takes you down what looks like a dead end, you just keep following wherever you end up being led as a result of never taking your hand off, your right hand off the wall, and you'll eventually come out of the maze, out of the labyrinth. Well, this is the guiding principle. It's the, it's the radar beacon behind all the work that a person is doing. Now, it still may seem that, well, this still is kind of vague, no? I mean, isn't spirituality, how do you feel a thing like that? What are the actual borders on a sensation or an intention? How do I even know what I truly desire? And on top of that, how do I know what I'm truly intending by, by what I desire? Well, none of this is left to chance because nothing in creation uh, is done by chance. That's all laid out in a highly scientific, precise manner. Uh, take a look at this. This book, a rather large tome, this is uh, a book that's used in the first few semesters uh, at Cobb U, and it contains uh, articles, uh, diagrams, principles, uh, all by authentic Kabbalists. These are original texts, Kabbalistic texts, and they explain the science plus the approach to the science. For instance, here is uh, a diagram of what occurred in the general forces of nature prior to the Big Bang. And then what happens 
after that point in which uh, a point of desire is reached in which dimensions or worlds can then extend from that initial uh, point of desire and then how all of those worlds are broken down uh, inside each phase or dimension of human experience of desire and we're part of this whole um, general desire of the universe part of the general system right down to the place where we exist to this sort of halfway point of creation of the general development of of the evolution of what we call of what Kabbalah calls the creature and then both the the methodology and the map in which one ascends back through these stages but in a very conscious way and all the time that this is happening that target that keeping ourselves aimed at that pure bestowal is what a person feels to one degree or another as they move through these different states and they're all measurable they're all actually um, they're common to everybody who who undertakes this method so you can check out how to do a particular let's say experiment of self-development and it's not self but f development from self to the whole you can check it out by looking at the target using all of the the components of the experiment um, that is what a person needs to do to to advance their connection to this or to see their disconnection from the ideal of spirituality which is this selfless giving and anybody who goes through these different states feels exactly the same thing at that point in their development that's what's called a world because there's a kind of a uh, there's a commonality there for those who, who are working in it by the way world also means in this system uh, it has the same meaning in Hebrew as both concealment and revelation so the both of these things happen uh, depending on the qualities that the person is working with and what they're comparing this stuff is really fascinating and I'm sure many of you are like show me explain to me uh, it, uh, at least an experiment or something how does this science work now here's the problem it's a spiritual science it is uh, about the forces above the, the material world and that means that the definitions of those terms are not anything like the definition of terms uh, of the physical sciences and you can't reach an understanding of the terminology just by taking it in intellectually because the whole process of the upper science is that the scientist has to change himself to be in equivalence with the spiritual state that he wants to investigate so likewise the understanding of the terminology is an ongoing process in which a person learns what the Kabbalists actually mean now that doesn't mean that any of this is vague it's very concrete in what happens inside of a person and all of that is to say that as far as Kabbalah goes spirituality is not theoretical it is a concrete science that can be felt in the heart that uses this world the matter of this world and uses it to rise to another level and it is a, a science of the upper world of the spiritual world and so it's very difficult when you first look at this and you hear about it uh, impossible and absurd to judge whether or not this is actually so the only way that a person can know is by testing it for themselves and having a direct experience of whether it works or not and you go from your own theoretical ideas about spirituality into hard testing of what so or not and that's the great benefit of being serious about spirituality putting your ladder down in one place and climbing in that place because you can't carry your ladder here there and everywhere and never put it down that's it for today so please if you like this then like share subscribe and comment mm -hmm.